the planet Bis, deep core base of the Rakatan Infinite Empire. On that world, at the edge of the Bludnach Sea, stands the command center of Predor Skalnas, a testament to his martial power. Where is he? Crash! <clears throat> so clever is Tulkar. Disable the devourer's reporting device, will he? He presumes that he will keep me from the force rich world I seek? That world is my prize. He will not share it with me. His Predor, to whom he owes obedience, he connives to be my equal, conspires to replace me. Tulkar is even more devious than I gave him credit for. A pity. Trill, that my own force hound lacked the skill to locate the world. That Tulkar's hound Zesh found. I should prepare you for my table. Tulkar has betrayed me. I want his head on a spit. That world should have been my magnificent prize. It will be, my Fredor. Allow me to take a scout ship, my Fredor. I will track the Devourer from the spot where it vanished by tracking Zesh. The world you seek will be where he is. The brood link between you and Zesh is still strong, is it? Good. You understand my mind, Hound Trill. Find this world for the glory of your Predor, for the glory of the Infinite Empire, and, if he still lives, find Zesh. Jedi legend tells how Tython birthed twin moons from her fiery core, Dark Bogan and Light Ashla, to remind all those who seek balance in the internal struggle between dark and light. Millennia ago, the moons were colonies for non-force adepts who were compelled to leave Tython. From the moons, the children of Tython traveled outward to form settlement worlds. The ruins of the stone cities they left behind are used by Jedi in exile. Zesh sits and ponders the night sky as the shadow of Bogan again devours bright Ashla in the sky. The dark always devours the light. The Jedi say the light returns to balance the dark. The light side they speak of is alien to him. As a slave to the Rakata, Zesh has only known what the Jedi call the dark side. Memories of his past flicker before him, elusive, coming in shadowed glimpses. His earliest memory, him and his broodmates, huddled together for warmth, Names and faces elude him, but she was always there, fierce protector, comforter of pain. Ripped from the brood, he was taken to his master's machines, encased in a tomb-like shell where he screamed in fear. Around him, he sensed his broodmates shrieking in the darkness. He learned anger and hate. Later, he understood that his bleak anger, this dark hatred, was the force and the power that fed his master's ships. One master, Tulkar, sensed talent within Zesh, freed him from the machines to train as a force hound. From that moment, Zesh was alone. Zesh became the best at what he was trained to be. Loneliness became a way of life. He remembers power. That was the past when he was a slave of the Rakata, two months ago, everything changed. Even though the changing currents of the deep core, Zesh sensed Tython. He led the Rakata here to cull the world, but something went wrong. The Rakatan ship, the Devourer, exploded above Tython. As the ship fell, Zesh killed his master and stole his escape pod. On Tython, he encountered his first Jedi, three journeyers. 
He fought first to kill them, then fought to save their lives. She was the reason. In the dark abyss of Rue, she glowed with light. It was an experience outside of his understanding. Something within him yearned for it. He could not let her die. Why? She was the enemy. Death was common. He did not understand the feelings that compelled him to save her. Feelings that made him weak. He was struck down by the Force, by the other Jedi. They made him a prisoner and exiled him to this dark moon, Bogan. Lognote, exile Zesh, present in his compound, marking the end of his second month since arrival. Please note, the supply ship will arrive in one week. Good night, exile Zesh. He was told by the Jedi that he was out of balance in the Force. His task on Bogan was to find the balance between light and dark through meditation and reflection. But Zesh understands the truth behind their words. He is here because the Jedi fear his dark power. He knows what Bogan truly is. A prison. The supply ship comes in one week. Good to know. Make his rations last. He hasn't been hungry. He's better fed by his Jedi jailers than he was by his Rakatan masters. Tool Kar is dead. Masterless on Bis, Zesh would have fought another slave in the arena for a new master, but he is not on Bis. If he is no longer a slave, then what is he? The attack, savage, unexpected. Why did he not sense it coming? Has his exile dulled his senses? Zesh finds reality twisted on itself. There is no air! Wham! Attack, boy! Show me your worth! What did you do to me? I call it a mind twist. I'm inside your head. Hurts, doesn't it? Crash! Rawr! You want to kill me? Then do it! But first, answer one question. I want to know why you appeared here on Bogan to me. You saw me? Like the Journeyers. I'm Dagon Lok. You have a name? I don't want to keep calling you boy. Zesh. Of course. Should have guessed. It's written all over your face. Put that on so you'd remember your name, did you? This mark designates me as a Force Hound of the Rakata. They mark our limbs, too. Easier to find the pieces if the battle does not go well. How did you enter my compound? I was told these cuffs kept prisoners apart, yet you don't wear them. No, neither do you. There, you're free. Figured out a way to remove them with the Force, without disabling the sensors. The sentry droids think we're where the cuffs are. Droids aren't actually very smart. A good trick. But we are still prisoners. There's no way off this moon. Now the sentry droid will think you sleep. Tonight is the dark of the moon, and we will cast no shadows. Walk with me, brother. Tython, Stav Kesh in the Ice Giant Range, a place for Jedi to train in the martial arts, and place to bring body and mind back into balance. Hiya! Master Tave instructs three journeyers, Shea Koda, Seknos Wrath, and Tasha Ryo, reminding them, restoring them. Fight to preserve your life! Fight to preserve the life of your enemy! These are the tenets of the Jedi! Use the Force! Sense your opponent! Anticipate his next move! Then strike! 
Strike! Strike! Ha! Humph! The three of you can do better. Your attack was predictable. Your minds were elsewhere. Your feelings dominated by doubt and anger. Ah, uh, you still dwell on the one sent to Bogan. We all saw Zesh in a vision before the crash, Master Tave. It was a true force vision. I think it meant he should stay here on Tython. So why aren't the Masters taking us seriously? We... After Zesh was subdued, the Council allowed me to help him remember his past. But there were strong barriers, shadowed images, intense darkness. Zesh was out of balance, but not by choice. Had he stayed on Tython, he could have been helped by us. But our words, our vision, were swept away, just as the masses ignored Dagon Loke's vision. Why? You are young and don't remember. The Temple Masters are rightfully leery. Dagon Loke's vision drove him mad, and he ended up on Bogan. Perhaps Dagon Loke's vision was real, too. Ours was. If that were true, it would indeed be serious. As for you three, can you recall a time in your training when the Masters did not take your words and actions seriously? Journey as now, you will someday become Masters yourselves. Think as Masters. An alien craft from an unknown race crashes on Tython. Three journeyers have a vision of the only being to survive that crash. As Masters, would you not take this seriously? Consider it deeply. Do not worry. You are not being ignored. Now, lessons are done. Tasha is required at Caleth, and Shay and Seknos are needed at the forge. That's the trick I want to learn. The waterfalls of Akar Kesh feed the rivers that flow beneath the towering monolith. Islands dot the landscape, tranquil in their isolation, a place for meditation. It's why Rajavari came here. A Jedi general in the Despot Wars, Rajavari's strong command won many battles, and his calm wisdom saved many lives. After the war, Rajavari laid down his sword and became one of the Jedi who meditate on the Force. His mind should be as still as a lake at dawn. That's why Ketu has come seeking Rajavari. Instead, he senses unease in his former master. Ketu, you have not infringed on my solitude since the matter of Dagon Lok. What brings you to disturb my meditations this time? Again, you ask your wisdom, Master Rajavari. I know that you sensed the dark energy that preceded the Force Storm. All Jedi did. Yes, Tython's skies may be clear once more, but the darkness lingers. The balance is tenuous. Speak your mind. I will listen. As the two Jedi walk, Ketu tells Rajavari of the crashed alien ship and its sole survivor, Zesh, who wielded a blade of frozen energy. So, despite the journeyers' visions, the Council sent Zesh to Bogan. Tell me, Ketu, did you ignore their vision because they are inexperienced journeyers, or because you did not share it? I should... should... I sound war drums based solely on a vision, General. Dagon Loke's vision was far more dire, and the Council ignored it. Nothing happened. You think the Force whispers in your ear, and visions become tangible? That's not how it works. All we're allowed are glimpses. If we are lucky, it is up to us to discern the truth. I know the truth. The vision Loke had in the chasm drove him mad. Then explain the blade of fire, shared in both visions. Did you learn nothing from me? It's been twelve years since Master Telat was killed in the Despot War, and you took his place. Yet you're still so youthful in your wisdom. How long will you be Master Telat's little shadow? 
for all your meditations on the balance and peace, you would still incite war. This is not the Jedi way. Listening to the Force is the Jedi way. Admit it. If these visions are true, the entire Jedi Order would change. All we know would come to an end. You came for my wisdom, Master Ketu. Tell the Master to consider Dagon Lok's vision a forewarning we should have heeded seven years ago. That what the journeyers experienced could be the dawn of what Lok's vision foretold. Learn what Zesh knows. Where there is one warrior, an army may follow. This is what I wanted to show you, Zesh. There was this big war on Tython about twelve years ago. I ended it, and some enemy fighters crashed here on Bogan during the final battle. They cleared most, uh, off most of the battle debris, but my brother Jedi missed one. A Shikakwan fighter. They were the enemy. Beauty, isn't she? And mostly intact. What's that, little brother? Oh, right. It's Loke's ship now. I don't intend to end up like this poor Murglak. I need to get off Bogan. I have a destiny. The Force showed it to me in a vision. The Jedi Science Temple of Anil Kesh on Tython straddles a deep planetary rent known as the Chasm. Exploration of the Chasm is forbidden because no Jedi has ever gone very far into it without losing their mind. The Masters insisted there was something within the Chasm that caused this madness. Me, I considered that a challenge. Followed in the war, the despot war, the war I ended, I had risen from the rank of ranger to master. I convinced my best friend, a ranger named Hawk Ryu, to dare the forbidden with me. Dagon, you feel a buzzing in your head. I think we've gone far enough on this run. Let's head back and look over the data. Only the bottom is far enough. We said we were going to take this... In stages. Be smart about it. Let's be brave about it. I... Wait. I'm seeing something. Figures forming in the mist. A creature with a single red eye leading an army. A sword of flame. Destruction. Fire. Death. I stared into the void. Into the mouth of chaos. I think I started screaming. Dagon, no! Hawk, look! Do you see it? I... We are getting out of here. Let go of me! Let me go! I told the council about my vision. The council told me I was mad. I was exiled to Bogan until I renounced my vision, until I would tell them the lie they wanted to hear. Narrow-minded fools! I know what I saw. I know what I was called to do. I will not change. They will. I think you were part of my vision. This looks like a force saber. You know this weapon? Yes, it's a Force Saber weapon of the Force Hounds of Rakata. My weapon, now in the hands of the Jedi. Without it, I am incomplete. Better they had cut off my arm. Your weapon was part of my vision, a sword of fire. I need this weapon, then they must believe me. Can you make another? Every Force Hound must build his own weapon. I need the right kind of crystal, then modify it through alchemy. Make a hilt. In theory, yes, I could make another. Not here. The planet Krev Coer is rich in raw crystalline material, and there are the forge factories on Nox, but we can't reach them. Why not? You have a ship. 
The ion drive and fusion reactor are intact, but Minox sucked the power cells dry long time ago. No way to start it. I've tried. The Force is power. By the abyss! You know the way. You must pilot the craft. I will not be able to. The Force Hound sinks into himself, deep into the wells of rage, hate, and fear that burn within him, and makes them boil. Minox, drawn by the surge of power, flock hungrily to the ship. Beneath their leathery wings and flailing bodies, the ship's hull begins to glow. The reactor's online! Zesh! That's enough! Stop! You overload the power cells and it'll blow! You kill us both! You have to stop! I order you to stop! Now! It is dangerous to stop me when I command the Force. Don't ever presume to understand my power. Go, fly the ship. And they say, I'm crazy. You are dangerous, boy. The level of power that you call, you can call is formidable. I should just space you. You could be a major obstacle in my plans. But that same power could make you a significant ally. If you can be controlled, you were part of my vision, the harbinger of what is to come. I'm sure of it. You may live, Force Hound, for now. Make me my Force Saber, and then we will see. Thank you all for tuning in. We'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel and click the bell to get notified about our next video. Until the Infernal Brotherhood convenes again, may the Force be with you.